Hey, in this video I'm going to walk through how to remove the last element in a list using append in Prolog and I'll do a follow-up video to show you another strategy on how to remove the last element as well just to show you two different ways and I guess first things first is you might be looking at this and wondering how the hell does this actually mean to remove the last element of a list and um, yeah for sure I was struggling to understand this as well and it's pretty confusing but hopefully I'll shed some light on it but I've got this diagram here hopefully it will help me explain what I'm talking about and the way to actually interpret this is just going back to the basics of what actually append is trying to do and in the first argument position list 1 second argument list 2 third argument is the final result so what append does is it, it takes the first list and the second list and concatenates them together to produce the final result list, right? And I think it's best to ignore this top one for the moment because it seems a bit abstract. So we'll go down to the bottom one here and hopefully make some sense. This, the second argument list 2 represents the last element in the final result list. So basically if I was to sort of ask you this question because this would probably make more sense you know, what does if I don't know what the first argument is but have the second argument and I want to produce the final result so if I have this first list here but I don't actually know what it is I know what the second list is then what does this first list have to be in order for us to concatenate this list with this list to produce this list and we've, we've already got C so all we need is A, B to make up the final result so therefore this is the final result because we're using X here to store the final result and X contains this list but minus the last element which is how it all works or how to read it anyway and you might be wondering why we use this anonymous variable in here and that's because I'm using C here for visualization purposes to just show that it represents the last element of the list but when you're actually doing it we don't know what the last element will be we just know that we want to single out one element only but we don't know what its actual value it could be it could be one or two or three it could be anything so that's pretty much why that works and using this same approach you can actually remove the first element of the list by doing the same thing I mean you obviously wouldn't do it this way but because you can just use the head and tail to extract because if, if you use the um, head and tail by using the bar the tail is the rest of the list, the list minus the head anyway but if you do if you just change the way the variables sit, so instead we've got we've got x here in the first position, but now we've got x in the second argument position. So this means that think of it this way: a will represent the first element of the list because it's in the first argument list one position. So if I was to ask you if we want to concatenate a with something to achieve this result what does this need to be in order for us to you know get that and if you said B and C then yeah you're 100% correct because obviously concatenating A and B and C together will produce A, B and C and it just so happens that we're storing the final result in the second argument position which happens to be B, C which is not including the first element so it just so happens by the arrangement of variables um, we get the right answer so yeah it's pretty cool how it works um, hopefully that cleared up some uh, confusion but now we'll actually start actually working out the result and how it works and if you followed my last videos on append basically goes through the same trace method of piecing it all together so I guess the number one confusion here is that what Prolog does is 
it goes to the knowledge base, starts from the very first or the top and then scans down line by line to try and find a match. What does this query term match with in the knowledge base? And it doesn't actually match the base case first. This is the base case, this is the recursive case. The reason why it doesn't match with the base case is that these two variables lists are the same name, so therefore they have to be equal to exactly the same thing. But if you match the corresponding arguments here, the second argument is a list containing one element only, but the third argument is a list containing three elements, so they, there's no way they can be the same. So therefore, prolog falls through to the recursive case. So that's where we'll start. So we'll just put one of these here. And it's the same process that I took before. When prolog uh, does its uh, recursive call, it will just set up a couple of variables and give them random memory addresses. So it's xg1 and we don't actually know what the inner contents of this list containing one element will, will be. So we'll just denote that with g2 saying I don't know what um, that anonymous variable is at the moment but um, we'll work it out as we go along and the only real information we have here to populate some of these variables variable values is the third argument position here so we can just you know start to um, you know work through what each would be so the head's A and the tail is BC and yeah, like we know what the head is now. The head's head's just going to be a result will be b c because that's what this inner list is here. And Prolog doesn't know what the tail is yet, so it just gives it another random variable. It doesn't know what list two yet will be. Um, list two because because in the second argument position it's a list with an anonymous variable in there we'll just keep on writing as a list with an unknown in the middle to denote that um, it is actually a list but we just don't know its element yet and this will make sense when we go back to the, the, the unification process so hopefully we'll just make it a bit clearer and G3 so we'll just keep track of what we're doing here and what we're saying is that g1 is going to equal a g3 and g2 is going to equal g4 um, and how I derived this was that we look at the corresponding argument position so these line up with the first argument position and we're saying that x is g1, right? So g1 will be equal to whatever this evaluates to, whatever this term evaluates to. So, and likewise g2, we don't know what g2 yet is yet, but because they line up with the second argument position, once we know what g4 is, then that gets assigned to g2. If that makes sense, hope it does. But this will come in handy when we rebuild the result again, when we unwind from recursion. So now Prolog recursively calls itself again. And in this process, it goes back up to the top of the knowledge base. And it scans from the very top, looking for a term that matches or unifies with this. And the base case doesn't match yet because the this list and this list need to be exactly the same because these are exactly the same variable names but the result here is two argument lists a two element list sorry but this uh, list two here is only a single element list so one element and two elements don't match so we don't do the base case yet we fall through and do another recursive case so we'll go ahead and do that make some room here um, so right so this 
these are the variables that get passed through to this next append call. So this would be another stack frame. So the only real data we have is BC, so we can go ahead and populate the third argument with those details. So we know that head will be B and the tail is just C because there's only one element after C so it just gets put into its own list and uh, head is B Prolog doesn't know what the tail is yet so we can assign that to another random variable and likewise list2 doesn't have anything yet so we'll just keep that in a list so it's clear on what we're actually doing G5 G6 and um, yeah for the sake of it this will be um, just C because that's what the inner list here is which is result so that looks good um, to keep things consistent we'll write out the formula still to make it 100% clear so the, the the level above us is waiting to find out what G3 is and this stack frame here can provide the value G3 because the first argument position here is waiting on this value here so G3 equals B bar G5 and G2 G4 is equal to whatever G6 is so yeah again G4 take the second argument position G4 is once we know what G6 is then um, we can give that to G4 so G2 equal what G4 is and to work out G4 we need to work out what G6 is and um, yeah these will be clearer when we when we unwind from recursion again but this is fine for this stack frame so now Prolog recursively calls itself again and Prolog goes up to the top of the knowledge base looks for a match so this time the base case does actually match because I'll put this here because these lists have to be exactly the same right so the third argument gets the value C because a variable in Prolog can bind to any value remember and this 2 its inner contents is an anonymous variable so it can it can contain and the variable is unbinded so it doesn't have, have a value yet so it can be binded to any value at all which means that this list here gets C so that means that yeah this G6 now equals C because it, because there's an anonymous variable inside it can con contain any value which is why Prolog se says yeah, yeah this is cool I'm happy to unify the contents of this uh, G6 variable to BC because I understand that uh, anonymous variable can contain anything I don't really care what it is but the general pattern of matching a single element list with a single element list is acceptable when one of the lists can contain any value inside it and yeah likewise uh, G5 G5 here will contain get binded to the empty list because G5 is an unbinded variable so it can accept any any value so that's that's a stage set at the moment um, we can now go ahead and start sort of filling in the results so the base case is executed but the base case is what has provided us the initial values so G5 has an empty list G6 contains C now so everywhere there's a G6 we can just write C and G5 we can just write an empty list so we can now go ahead 
to our formula here on the left which will hopefully you know clean things up a bit so we know what G6 is now G6 is C so we said we said G4 is equal to whatever G6 is and that means that since we know what G6 is G4 is known and since we know G4 then that's what we said G2 will be equal to G2 is equal to whatever G4 is so therefore um, the second argument here is going to be C and if we work out what G3 is going to equal we said G3 is going to equal B pi up G5 we worked out what G5 is because it binded to the first argument position provided by the base case and if we evaluate what this is B pi up um, G5 G5 is an empty list and remember a pipe with a list following it means that the pipe actually removes the list so that means that G3 is just equal to B so that means that this value gets passed up to the next recursion level and we can everywhere there's a there's a G3 we can just put a B there and for the sake of completeness everywhere there's a, a G4 we can put a C there and yeah like I said we, we've already worked out what G4 is so this stack frame's done so now with this stack frame's back active and we can just work out what these formula, formulas are we've worked out what G4 G4 is just the, the list C so now we can work out um, what G1 is so we just need to complete I'll just write this out again because it's a bit messy B so G1 is equal to A bar list containing B but the bar removes the list B so what we end up is is with just A and B so now G1 is equal to AB and that is what the query caller will see printed to the console in the X position and since we're only concerned with the value in the X position then you know that that's the answer because that's purely how I've got our variable arrangement set up so yeah it's pretty much just connect connect the dots and work through it and see where you end up but hopefully this explanation has um, you know helped a little bit on how to remove the last element and I'll uh, do another video coming up that shows you another way how to remove a element from the last position um, but yeah thanks for watching and hope to catch you next time